Hi everyone, I'm Matt from THKP, and this is the second in a series about making a sliding puzzle game I'm calling Color Collapse. At the end of our last video, we had just added the ability to freely drag a single box around the grid. Today, we're going to cover restricting drag motion to strictly vertical or horizontal motion, dragging the corresponding row or column around, and finally detecting and removing runs from the board. Let's start off by restricting the drag direction. Basically, we will just check if the dy of the drag offset is greater or the dx. So we will pull this out into its own variable. We'll say drag offset. And we'll just create a new offset here out of the drag offsets dx. And then we don't want the y coordinate. And then we'll just do the opposite over in the else. Okay, right, let's give that a shot. See what that looks like. Okay, so we undid the <laughs> translation into the coordinate space, so we will just divide this value by the game box rec.width. Actually, we'll divide this by game box rect.height. Okay, so now we have our locking behavior. Oh, but it only goes in the one direction. Okay. Interesting. Okay. So this is because we need to compare their absolute values. And now that we have this a snapping behavior, I think we can start to try to move the row and column along with our tap box. So we're going to add a method which allows us to get the corresponding row provided a box and then another one that uh, gives us the column provided a box. So let's do this. So we'll say list Okay, so we are iterating over all the boxes. We check if the dy value for the locks are the same. And if so, we add that rowmate candidate into the rowmates. And the get column mates for box is going to be ex almost exactly the same. Okay, and we will keep track of the corresponding row and column that's been tapped. And we will keep track of that in our on pan start. So we are holding on to the tapped row and the tapped column. And now as we're dragging, instead of just updating the location of the tapped box, we will update the uh, tapped location of the whole row. So we should just be able to wrap this in a for loop. Okay, so now we will move the whole row when we are moving this. I'll just refresh this. Nice. There you go. That's definitely what we wanted to do. All right. Uh, I think we've got the wrong implementation for get column mates. Uh, yes. Okay. So we need to check the X. Okay. 
I don't know. Could be could be an interesting mechanism. We could change our game. You you slide them orthogonally. Hmm. That would be interesting. All right. Not the point of this exercise though. So now we can slide. We can go like this. And so now we are getting the sliding behavior. Although when we let go, we see that it's it's we're allowed to just be completely misaligned with the grid, which makes a mess fairly quickly out of our game board. So we're going to align them all to this 0.5 grid. So let's create a new method to snap our boxes. To recap, our grid is unit sized, meaning one box in the game world maps onto one unit on the grid. And box centers fall on half units, for example, 0.5, 1.5, 2.5, etc. The way our snapping algorithm is going to work is we will subtract the box's location by 0.5 in both directions to align their locations to integer values, then we'll round to remove any small differences that the user may have created when they were dragging, and finally we're going to add back the 0.5 in both directions to the box's location to make sure that they're in the correct position again. So let's do that, so we will say Okay, so this should be everything we need to snap our boxes. And so this is a good time as any to do our cleanup from the other thing. So we will snap the boxes. And then we'll just iterate over all of the boxes and just like update the start location to their location because we're done with that particular move. And while we're at it, I'll just initialize these to empty lists. I just feel like I like the idea that there, there's always a valid list. So now let's take a look at our grid. Let's refresh so that we get ourselves a clean grid. I think we'll need to wrap this in a set state. All right. Cool, cool. All right, so now we have our core mechanic so the user can drag the boxes around. Okay, so now we are snapping our boxes at the end of the user's drag. And once we've snapped the boxes, we should be ready to remove any streaks of three that we have in either our rows or our columns. So I'm gonna make a function called remove contiguous and we'll add it up above. And actually, let's get this app out of here. We shouldn't need that for a little bit. Okay, and this is the high level function that does everything, but we're actually gonna break this down into removing the contiguous boxes from the rows and the columns separately. Okay, and we're gonna keep track of the boxes that we want to remove by creating a set. Okay, so every time we look at a new box, we wanna check if the current streak is over, and if the streak was long enough, we'll add all the members of the streak into the list of boxes to remove. So we will say if. Oh, and we'll need to know which color the current streak is. Before we keep track of the new streak, if the current streak dot length is greater than or equal to three, we will say boxes to remove. 
Okay, and then now at the end we will say boxes dot remove where. Okay, so just to walk through this, so we are provided a list of rows or columns. We iterate through the list of rows or columns. Then we iterate through the boxes in the specific row or column. And then we say if the streak is broken and the previous streak length was greater than or equal to three, we'll add all of those boxes to the boxes to remove. Otherwise, we just continue the current streak and then move on to the next box. I am noticing one case we need to keep track of is if we end on a streak, we just need to make sure we do one final check at the end, which is that if the current streak is greater than three, we will still remove that last streak. Okay, so this is good. So this will make up our calls in uh, remove contiguous, but we actually now have the problem of getting our rows or columns. Our game board is just a list of boxes, so we will need to add a new function, get rows, get columns, that will allow us to get those. Let's create a function that returns a list of list of game boxes. Okay, so let's walk through this. Technically, our grid can expand infinitely. So we iterate over the existing boxes and then we just group them into a map according to what their dy location is. Our streak algorithm depends on the boxes being uh, sorted. So as we're adding them to the list, we will just say row.sort and then this is a comparison function, we'll just say a, b, and then we'll say a dot lock dot d x dot compare to b dot lock uh, dot d x. So we're just sorting according to the x values. It doesn't actually matter which order it's in, whether it's in left to right or right to left, but we need to make sure that they are in order. So we have get rows, get calls is gonna be very similar. Let's see if I can implement it without making any copy paste errors. Okay, we'll rename this calls. Let's call dx. And then we want to sort by dy. Okay, so this should be our get calls. And now our remove contiguous will just be two calls to our remove contiguous from rows or calls using our get calls and get rows function. So we'll say remove contiguous from rows or calls, get rows. Okay, so this was, this was kind of a bunch of, of coding. I typically prefer to code in smaller chunks, but sometimes, you know, sometimes that's what it takes. So we will return these why we get, we're getting the blue underline. Okay, and we are calling remove contiguous. We, in remove contiguous, we call remove contiguous from rows or calls. We call it on rows, we call it on calls. And then in here, creating our boxes to remove. We're iterating over the rows or calls iterating over all the boxes. We're registering them as boxes to remove, assuming they're a long enough streak. 
and then we're removing them at the end. So this is looking pretty good. I think uh, this should be ready to run. Let's pull our app back. Okay, so let's give this a shot. All right, so we see our contiguous boxes in that row disappear. Let's see if we can find uh, contiguous boxes in a column, just to check that. All right, and those disappear too. So we have managed to get our contiguous boxes disappearing. So this looks like it's working pretty well, but we actually have a, an issue with this where it will not take into account gaps. So let's say we've got the red, red, gap, red, it will still consider that a, a streak and then it'll remove that. But as far as I'm concerned, that shouldn't be considered a streak. So we will just add a little bit more code to our remove contiguous from rows or calls just to make sure that we're not removing streaks that include a gap. So we will go back up here. And so this is where we're determining whether or not the streak is continuing. And the only thing we're looking at is if the streak is not equal to the box color. But we also will need to keep track of one other piece of data. We'll say lock offset. And then we'll start to maintain this. And there'll be two more conditionals here and we'll say so if the street color is not equal to box color, yes, of course, that's not a streak anymore. But also, if last box lock dot dx minus. So if the previous boxes x location is greater than one, in the case that we are going through a row, we know that there's a gap. We also need one more check for if it's a column that we're going through. We'll check if dy is greater. So uh, let's refresh. We have a good amount of boxes to make these columns with. All right, so we will make a streak with a gap in it up above the board. Okay, so this clearly did not work. But I think what we need to do is check the absolute value of these differences. Okay, and we, we should be able to, I think those were legitimate. Okay, so we have fixed the bugs. These three greens are no longer treated as a contiguous region. So that should be it for removing contiguous colors. But if you recall, in the original demo, we had this behavior where the boxes would tend to kind of gravitate towards the middle. But that's going to be the topic for our next video. I hope you join us for the next step in our color collapse journey. Thanks for checking out this tutorial and keep an eye out for future videos from THKP. If you found this useful, give us a thumbs up, and if you're interested in seeing more, don't hesitate to subscribe.